My guest today is one of a very select club to have won the triple crown of acting, an Oscar, a Tony for her work on Broadway, and four Emmys, TV's top honor. Here at the Monte Carlo Television Festival in Monaco, she's been awarded the Crystal Nymph for a lifetime of achievement in TV. Dame Helen Mirren, hello. Hi. You have won so many awards over your career. What does this particular one for your work in television mean to you? Well, I think it's such an interesting time in television right now, isn't it? I mean, when I started off my career as an actress on film, I, I started on British television. And at that time, the, the saying was, that British film is, is alive and living on television, mm -hmm. because the British film industry was very, um, very sad, very thin, very unimp unimpressive. But the work that was being done on television was very interesting. All the good writers, all the good directors were working on television. Many of the British directors who then became big Hollywood directors started on British television. So that was where I started our, my work as, a, as an actress in front of the camera. But it's very interesting that now we've come back again to the situation where the most interesting work, the most powerful work, the most um, amazing writing, the incredible production values are happen happening on television. It's very gratifying to be receiving a, a, an award for television because television has become such a powerful entity. <laughs> now kiss my shoe and the ceremony is complete. Do you have a favorite TV show that you've been sucked into? Oh, many, mm -hmm. many. I, I've been watching just recently, I've been watching a TV show called Bloodlines that does wonderful acting. I watch a, a series called Stranger Things. I love House of Cards. I, you know, there, there's, so, there's such an amazing um, uh, variety of work available. Your TV show, Prime Suspect, ran on and off for 15 years, and you created this character of Jane Tennyson. What was it that kept you coming back to her over the years? She was such a great character. And she was, nowadays, there are many female characters like that on television, but at that time, there were none. Um, female characters that were conflicted, that were not, they were anti-hero, if you like. They were, um, you know, difficult people challenging, um, not, uh, you know, at the time, uh, women, women's characters were very one-dimensional, and this was um, not a one-dimensional character written by a woman, Linda LaPlante. She was like a second skin to me, um, Jane Tennyson. It was just, I understood her. It was interesting, uh, you know, obviously as we progressed on, um, we had many different writers, but I would always say to the writers, um, take this and take it wherever you want it to go. I give you complete artistic freedom. And that actually was um, artistically uh, a really good thing because, um, you know, they would take the character in, in unexpected directions. Vice. I'm heading a vice squad. One interesting thing about Jane is she was always hmm. battling sexism, something that I'm sure that you faced with in your career. And I'm thinking in particular about that video that went viral earlier this year of an interview you gave in the 1970s, where you really put a presenter in his place when you were again quite young. When you look back at that interview, what do you think? I was amazed by how, um, uh, what presence of mind I had. At, when I did it at the time, um, I thought I'd blown it, you know, and and the attitude certainly, I think, from the presenter and, uh, you know, people at large, I thought, oh, God, I was so rude and, you know, and, and, and I'd sort of blown it. Um, but looking back at it, uh, which, thanks to the internet, we can do nowadays, um, I was absolutely amazed by um, how well I handled him, actually, because I was funny. You know, I wasn't insulting, which I could have been, really, but I wasn't. Um, and and, and um, I thought I, ha I handled it with, with grace, actually. <laughs> Come on, spit it out. I meant your, your figure. <laughs> My figure. Mm. Um, hinder you. 
in your pursuit of, of, of the ambition of being a successful actress. A or, successful or, or and a serious, serious actress, because mm. serious actresses can't have mm. big bosoms. Is that what you mean? You gave a wonderful commencement speech at Tulane University earlier this year where you laid out your five rules for a happy life. It's a wonderful <laughs> speech. I encourage everyone to, to check it out. No matter what sex you are, be a feminist. As an addendum to one of those rules, you did say, be a feminist. And you said you yourself didn't call yourself a fe feminist until recently. Why? Well, because feminism, when, when it first raised its head, thank God, was, it was vociferous. I applaud the feminist movement for that. But it was very um, anti a lot of the things that I, I personally enjoyed in life, makeup. Mm -hmm lovely clothes, <laughs> high heels, you know, um, feminine stuff. And, and I always loved, I've always loved costume, clothes, makeup. There wasn't room for me, the kind of feminist I was, in the feminist movement at that time. There came to be room later on as the feminist movement grew up and developed and opened its arms wider to incorporate more varieties of feminism, feminism, more varieties of women and what they, you know, what their likes and dislikes were. But at the same time, I'm, I'm very, very admiring of, of those women in the sort of uh, early 70s, I guess, really, who were, you know, very radical and very extreme, but it needed that radical extreme mm -hmm. voice to, to, for, for people to pay attention. You mentioned your admiration, your love of fashion. Of course, the role that many people know you for is the Queen, for which you won an Oscar. That, what must have gone through your head when you saw the clothes you had to wear for that movie? Oh, I burst. <laughs> I cried. I literally cried. I thought, I can't, I can't play a character who, who chose to wear these clothes. I just can't do it. But of course, I grew to love that character, really profoundly love her. And the great thing about the Queen is she has no personal vanity. And this is a woman who was very beautiful, you know, um, as a young girl, young woman. Um, but there's no personal vanity there. You know, she really would be is happiest with no makeup on and, and a rain hat scrunched on her head and a scarf underneath that rain hat and marching across the field in the rain in Wellington boots. That's when she's at her happiest. There, grief. Imagine I'm going to drop everything and come down to London before I attend to my grandchildren who've just lost their mother. You were made a dame in 2003, which is, which is a huge deal for the British. It was, and before I played the Queen, incidentally. Yeah, indeed. Yes. Did you, mm. did you hesitate at all before you I did, that? you know, I did, because um, uh, it's an incredible honour. Um, it's a recognition of your contribution to your country's culture and, uh, in my case, culture. At the same time, it slightly has, it, in, it, it traditionally had a slightly traditional sort of, you know, um, vibe about it. It was, it was very status quo and, and I thought of myself as an artist and, and our role as an artist is to, is to challenge the status quo. So I thought maybe I was you know, climbing onto the wrong side of the fence a little bit. Um, but then I spoke to my family and colleagues in the acting profession and they said, don't be stupid, you've got to do it. So I did, <laughs> yeah. We were talking before about your awards. You're not the only Oscar winner in your family. Your husband has won Oscars, is an Oscar winner as well, Taylor Hackford. Yes, uh, and nominated, yes. How do you, as a family, is that something you consider important? Do you have a display case with your awards or how do you um, deal with that? No, we should actually do that. <laughs> we should put all of our stuff, all it, all it all together. Um, you know, it, in, our, in our world, it's not like winning an Olympic gold medal. You know, if you win an Olympic gold medal for r running, you have won, you have won that award. You, pa you pass that line ahead of everybody else. You have won it. In our world of culture and art and drama, there is no first place. We, know, we all know that, really. We all play the game because it's an important game in terms of marketing and in terms of of raising awareness for movies and all of that, and people love it and they all get involved in it, the public. So it's important, but we all understand that actually, um, culturally, 
culturally and, and as artists, you can't say that this performance was better than that one or this film was better than that film. It, it, you know, it, it doesn't work that way. Mm. So, of course, we're proud and we're happy um, you know, that, that, that the golden light fell upon us at, at one point in our lives, but, but we don't elevate it to um, a position that it really doesn't belong in. Just to wrap up, if you could go back to give your 20-year-old self a little pep talk, what would you say to her? What would you encourage her knowing what you know now? Certainly stand up for yourself. Um, and to go back to the Parkinson interview, I was surprised that I did actually stand up for myself. And look how it worked out for me. <laughs> so, yes, stand up for yourself. And also, instantly stand up for other people. Um, if you feel that an injustice is being done either to yourself or to someone else, stand up, face it out. It's uncomfortable very often. It's embarrassing. Um, people, especially if you're a woman, they look at you like a You, you know, you're, you're an annoying person. Be annoying. Wonderful <laughs> words to close with, Dame Helen Muir, and thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Last night, we served this in this restaurant. The cuisine is not an old, tired marriage. It is a passionate affair. Decent Americans feel that Hollywood is just a haven for overpaid traders. You have your orders, Lieutenant. Your job is to be the eye in the sky. Yes, ma'am. We need to put a hellfire through that roof right now. All along, you have thwarted me and closed the doors in my face. We should be reunited with what is rightfully ours. Who did you write the letter to? I wrote the letter to death. Nice to meet you. They're charmed, I'm sure. You are here, your program spotlighting French heritage. Versailles, the Louvre, and the Mont Saint-Michel are all well-known stars of French heritage. But French genius and France harbors many other hidden treasures. The arts, gastronomy, architecture, as well as nature's wonders. Come along with France 24 and discover France's living heritage. From young apprentices to accomplished craftsmen, farmers to Michelin star sporting chefs, meet these people whose passion for their professions preserve and drive French heritage. You are here on France 24 and France24.com.